Good afternoon, everyone. The radicals are in control of the Democrat Party. Make no mistake, Democrat radicals want to shatter norms and disregard precedent for the sake of the very norms and precedent they claim must be safeguarded. They've proposed court packing, an egregious idea. They've entertained impeachment as punishment for the president exercising his lawful Article II, Section II authority to appoint, uh, nominate rather, a justice to the Supreme Court. They've advocated for the abolition of the Electoral College. These are all the tactics that they are using to sow chaos and discord. Likewise, they're endorsing a mass mail-out ballot system that will likely lead to the kind of week-long delay New York witnessed in its recent primary. Far-left radicals resort to tactics like this to push their extreme agenda because they cannot win on the merits. They cannot succeed based on the will of the American people. This administration will continue to call out these tactics while Democrats should end their petty politics and get to work. And with that, I'll take questions. John. Yeah, Kelly, I wonder if you can just clean up or clarify something the president said yesterday. Um, if he loses this election, can you assure us that there will be a peaceful transfer of power? You are referring to the question asked by the Playboy reporter, right? I, I'm referring to you with the president being asked if, if there would be a peaceful transfer of power, and he did not uh, say yes. Yeah, so I believe I'm asking you, will there be a peaceful transfer of power if he loses this I election? I believe that question asked by the Playboy power, in fact, I think I have it right here uh he was I'm asked question, he was right. asked when lose or draw whether he would accept the transfer of power i'm not entirely sure if he won why he would accept a transfer of power that is um maybe the deranged wish of that reporter but that's not how but, but, but uh governing a very works. direct and very simple question if the president loses this election Will this White House, will this president assure us that there will be a peaceful transfer of power? It's a very simple question. The, the, we, the president, since, uh, the president will accept the results of a free and fair election. Uh, but I think that your question is more fitting to be asked of Democrats who have already been on the record saying they won't accept the results of an election. Um, in fact, I have several of them here for you. South Carolina Democrat uh, Jim Clyburn has said uh, that Trump is not going to win fairly. Senator Barbara a boxer has said that the only way Trump will win is to steal it. That's according to Democrat Senator Barbara Boxer. Uh, the Washington Post has noted um, they have a headline, Democrats may not trust the results of the election if Trump wins. And then you have uh, that beautiful quote from Hillary Quint Clinton that Joe Biden should not concede under any circumstance. So I think your fitting is more question, more uh, fitting, a fitting question for Democrats. Yes. Kelly, uh, Kelly, just to understand this clearly, are the results legitimate only if the president wins? The president will accept the results of a free and fair election. He will accept the will of the American people. So for clarity, if he loses and it's free and fair, he will accept it. I've answered your question. He will accept the results of a free and fair election. Let me ask the yes. whole country. Obviously, it's only Chanel. states, though, right? Thank Kaylee. you, Kaylee. Uh, yesterday, the Senate released an 87-page report on Hunter Biden and Joe Biden's dealings across the board with Ukraine and with Russia. Um, specifically, it showed Hunter Biden supporting Russian prostitution, human trafficking, and receiving $3.5 million from Moscow. The question to you is, does the White House have any intention of helping the DOJ should an investigation be opened up on the Bidens? And number two, do you have a response to Rudy Giuliani yesterday telling us that um, this should immediately disqualify Joe Biden from his yeah, those were, that was a very troubling report. You know, I'll leave it to the DOJ as to how they move forward. Um, but I mean, I think this New York Post cover uh, says it all. You know, I heard so much about Russia collusion, uh, but it appears the only uh, collusion going on was between Hunter Biden as he accepted $3.5 million uh, from the wife um, of the Moscow mayor. Very troubling indeed. And in addition to that, Ukraine money as well. Um, and it's good that the Senate looked into that. Um, but finally, I would like to note the situation in Louisville, Kentucky last night. There were reports of vandalism. Uh, there were nearly 100 arrests, and the Trump administration urges calm and reminds those who wish to have their voices heard uh, to do so peacefully. You have a right to peaceful protest, as outlined in the First Amendment. Um, and the Attorney General Daniel Cameron said, if we simply act on emotion or outrage, there is no justice. Mob justice is not 
justice, justice sought by violence, is not justice. It just becomes revenge. And you contrast his message with that of CNN's Brianna Keeler, who said, I question the judgment of the Kentucky Attorney General saying that mob justice is not justice. We know that this is very loaded language. That's an appalling statement um, from Brianna Keeler at CNN. And what is outrageous about this take is that mob justice is not justice. Hours later, after this comment was made on CNN, two police officers were shot. This is not justice. This has nothing to do with politics. It has everything to do with the value of human life and the safety and security of our American cities. And across the country, uh, we've seen our police officers come under fire in the line of duty in Los Angeles. There was an ambush attempt on two police officers in Phoenix. A U.S. Marshal was ambushed and shot outside a federal courthouse in Linwood, California. A suspect ap approached a patrol car and fired a handgun into the passenger side window. And in Suffolk, Virginia, a a suspect open fired on a marked police car hitting the vehicle three times. Uh, our police officers deserve our respect and the violence that is being committed towards them, and this was just in the last week and a half, uh, is outrageous. And the words of, of CNN and of Brianna Keeler are outrageous, irresponsible, uh, and we should never hear statements like that, followed by hours later, two police officers being shot.